about short video games, games that respect your time. I'm Nate Heininger, and I'm joined here by the best co-host of the short game by far, Laura J. Nash. Hello, I'm the best because I'm the one who's available this week. We yes, are, that makes us the best. <laughs> this is the, that makes the, us the best. We don't. Need we are the- here. We have the mics. We have the power. We can cover whatever we want. Yeah, that's right. We don't suck need, at Reagan and Shane. <laughs> we don't need the brothers Kelly. Uh, no. If this happens to be your first episode, uh, we're sorry. For I'm the sorry. Very, sorry for the very <laughs> aggressive uh, opening to the show, but. Um, normally we at least have Reagan, if not Shane and, uh, Reagan has been on 99% of the episodes. So every once mm-hmm. in a while though, you know, he can't do something or can't be here right now. He's moving across the country again. Uh, so we're wishing him, uh, you know, uh, uh, easy and safe move. I know that's a stressful time, uh, but we're behind the wheel for this week. It's like the kids running the asylum. I won't that's... call us inmates, but we're definitely like the little kids getting to play uh, and pick our own games and pick whatever we want to cover. So that's right. Uh, so we this week are going to be talking about a delightful game called My Fa- My Friend Pedro. Uh, but before we get into the game and the specifics and why we found it delightful, I do want to take a moment to shout out our Patreon. And I want to shout out specifically uh, right now. We have a a thread in our Discord about game of the year for 2019 word it's crazy but we're approaching the end of 2019 and as a podcast we pretty much always spend november and december going oh crap what didn't we play this year what's going to show up on all the lists of the best games and then when we're doing our episode we're just like not going to have it in there and it's going to be Strange that what somehow. What is everyone going to email us about and be like, I can't believe you didn't cover blank because you yeah. didn't know it existed. Exactly. Yep. And so we we try to get all of the all of like the heavy hitters, the big gains, the ones that people are going to uh, really consider the best of this year. Uh, we try to get as many of them as we can. And generally, we try to get them when they're out. But every once in a while, we miss one. And so we have a, a really great thread going on in our Discord. Uh, for Game of the Year 2019. And uh, a member of the Discord, Aiden, suggested my friend Pedro as one of their favorite games of the year for 2019. So Laura and I were looking for a a, new, a game to play for this episode. And why not one of the games that someone who's in our Discord thinks is one of the best games of 2019? Uh, so, I mean, we both honestly said, let's go play something weird. And when we pulled this game up, it said something like... yeah. Uh, Imaginary friend banana tells you to kill everybody. And we're like, sure, that Very, sounds right, correct. Couldn't what the be, brief? Yeah, couldn't be weirder. So, uh, nope. so thank you to Aiden for this recommendation, but also um, any patron for a dollar uh, a month or more will get access to our Discord. A lot of great conversations going on there, and we have use the discord to guide our episodes in many, many times. So uh, thank you to the people who are currently uh, subscribing. And if you're considering it, um, just know that we're also, we have some content that we're working on right now, uh, that we're going to start releasing as patron only. So if you want some of the future bonus episodes, get in there dollar a month. Uh, we really, really appreciate it for those who have already and those who may in the future. So thank you. Uh, all right. So let's talk about my friend, Pedro. Did this game come from it came from a flash game so like so many and great as, games before it hey do not knock flash that is where i started oh, and yeah, uh absolutely. that is where 
Um, my friend uh, Rob, who does Sign and Happiness, came out of like a, a weird exploding, uh, like he made like a weird exploding people comics. So it's fine. Like yeah, Flash I, is Flash, a lot of weirdness. Flash definitely has the arc of you live long enough to become a villain sort of thing. Because 100%. <laughs> for, Flash was the thing for so long, and then uh, it really died a, a tragic and uh, disrespectful well, I, Apple death. Killed that. Apple, Apple murdered went, it. Apple went hard at how bad Flash is, and uh, yeah, so it's in the past. But uh, I, I do think it's been interesting to see all the people who have been who made all those games on Flash, and uh, you know, sort of went back into their development hole and figured out how to make these games on current platforms. And the Switch has been a great place for that, as well as obviously PC, which is where the, this game is available. So it yeah, started so, on Flash. Yeah, my understanding is that it started on Flash and it was lo loosely associated with uh, Adult Swim and it was played, like they said, 25 million times. Um, and this is a big evolution forward. Like it seemed like it was just a really like a proto game of this, but there was so much more in this Switch game. Um, and it's by, it seems like one guy, Victor Agren, uh, in Dead Toast Entertainment. He's based in Sweden, and he's been working since, like, 2015 on making this a, a full-fledged thing. Um, put a ton of modes in, kind of learned a lot from his uh, Flash players. But uh, it, he got it distributed by Devolver Digital, which means everyone keeps comparing it to Hotline Miami, which... Sure, it's also hyper-violent, but I think this is a really interesting game in its own right. And I'm saying interesting, and that makes it sound like it's some kind of weighty narrative game. It's not. <laughs> no, it, it's not at all. But no. this is a uh, another highlight. We, we've covered a ton of Devolver games, and they tend to fit right into our wheelhouse. And this is yet oh, another yeah. uh, great release from Devolver. Um, couple more like things before we get into what the game is if you're looking for uh it's four to five hours maybe eight tops depending on it's on switch windows um steam humble gog so it's not a huge investment uh but nate why don't you tell us what is this game we've been dancing around it yeah so my friend pedro is a side-scrolling platformer with uh guns and bullet time as its primary mechanic so you play as a guy who has uh woken up is about to be uh cannibalized you're, you're kind of wearing a off-brand deadpool outfit kind of wearing an off-brand uh, deadpool outfit you're you it seems like you were about to be chopped up into be human meat and you go on and escape uh revenge rampage out of there and the way the game basically works is uh you have only a few controls standard platformer controls really move left and right with your uh stick and then jump you can do a bit of a wall jump wall climb thing and then there's a dodge and then you also will have guns uh which you fire with the right trigger left uh if it's two guns you can separate your hands with the left trigger and you can also like duck and roll and again all sort of basic platformer things and the core of the game is that uh, since it's a side scroller you can generally see the area that you're about to enter into and there are a whole lot of people out there that want to kill you and they all use guns as well so you'll get a general idea of the area you're about to enter into and then either go in real time and just try to shoot them as, and kill them before they kill you or trigger bullet time and do more of like a max pain, uh, you know, obviously influenced by like the matrix and things like that, uh, where you are way more, everything slowed down and you're way more, uh, like, I don't know, artful or just art badass. Like, yeah. Oh, for just... sure. So we're going to talk a lot about why this game is fun, but trying to explain like, uh, like what it is that you're doing is you're just, it, it's almost like it's a puzzle, but with guns, there's a whole bunch of people in a room. You're going to have to kill them before they kill you. You can either do it hyper aggressively uh, and just play in real time and basically just being shot a lot and shooting them a lot. Or you can try to be really finesse and slow down time and execute these like really perfect uh, executions. Um, 
it, it, that's and, and that's I, really the whole game. Yeah, I wrote that it was very John Wick, very John Woo, very Deadpool. And so it sounds like this game on paper is a game I hate. I am on the record as like not being a shooter person. And I wrote in big all caps, a shooty shoot shoot Laura liked. And that's because it's not a survival game. It's a shooting platformer. And the difference to me is... It's much more about being badass and doing stunts and finding cool ways to kill people than worrying about being shot. Yes, it is. This game is incredibly forgiving in a lot of different ways, and we'll I think we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but it is more about did you do that really cool and did you have fun while you're doing it than it is like did you execute it because you can take a lot of bullets. Your health is broken into three primary chunks and is each chunk once you get out of that one it won't refill but each individual cell will refill if you just sit there for a second so you it's really easy to get health back guys are always dropping health and you can take a lot more bullets than they can take so again you can either go into these fights and try to execute this like perfect thing where you don't get shot at all and you take them all out either like kind of stealthily or with a super awesome backflip that you, you know, you, you crossed your arms in the middle of the shot and your left hand is shooting someone off to your right and your right hand is shooting someone off to your left. And then you're like whipping it back around and killing two people that are diagonally to you. You can do it that way. Or you can just sort of like stumble your way through the, the fight, just John wick style firing two handguns at uh, max clip directly at the chest of the thing that you know of the bad guy that you're trying to kill and it's not finessed but it gets the job done and to at least for me this game was a balance of those two things trying to do super cool stunts that result in like perfect execution failing at those and scrambling around trying to kill everything before it kills me uh ultimately yeah, and ha- that's having why i think it's time. got some like that's why I think it's got some Deadpool DNA in there because, like, it's not always about like you look cool for a while and then you kind of like mess up and you kind of land on your head, but you're not going to get ding- dinged for it at all. I think what really made me happy about this game is I could still pull off tricks, and yes. I've played a lot of console games um, that are shooters that to do tricks is considered a power hardcore player thing. So to do the tricks, you really need to have the controls down. I mean, hell, it's even in Street Fighter. Like, to do the really cool tricks, you got to know the combos. Yeah. This game doesn't really require combos because the game is about tricks. So the tricks are accessible when you start. Like, they're... Most games make the tricks so hard that you can't really feel awesome playing it. You feel like it's just an achievement to get through. This game wants you to be stylish, and it wants you to have that like really cool feeling. Even if you barely get through a level, you're still like parkouring off walls yeah. and like going down like upside down on a zip line and shooting two people in the head at once. Because it, even if you suck at the game, and I never got above a C rating <laughs> except on the motorcycle level where I inexplicably almost got a perfect score. <laughs> but, like, yeah, we definitely want to talk about the rating. Good to have fun with this game. Yeah, and the whole game, everything is so staged. Right. Like Mm -hmm. you're you're almost never in like a fight that you didn't choose to enter right now. You might not be in that fight in the way that you had planned on being in that fight, but you probably had a moment to see what was in front of you and make a general game plan for how you were going to handle it. So it can be like really, really simple stuff where like uh, there's a lot of closed doors that all you have to do is walk into them and your character will like kick them open or move through them. Uh, and so that there's that closed door and you can get right up to the edge of it. So 90% of your screen is on the other side of the door. So you can see everything that's over there. So you can see that there's a flight of stairs at the top of the stairs. There's a guy with a gun right at the bottom of the stairs. There's another guy with a gun. And then uh, up that second flight of stairs is another guy. So you can sit there and be like, okay, I'm going to rush in. I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to slow down time. I'm going to jump because that's going to look super sweet. While I'm in midair, I'm going to shoot the guy on the second floor uh, because underneath his feet, it's actually a grate. 
for no reason other than that it would be I guess it'd be cool for me to be able to shoot that guy. Bad luck mm-hmm. him standing on that grate. Uh, and then before I land, I'm going to shoot the other guy at the top of the stairs and I'm going to do it all in one slick motion. It's going to be super awesome. Here I go. Oh crap. I hit the wrong button for uh, slowing down time. I didn't actually jump. I rolled on the ground instead. Uh, that guy at the bottom was supposed to be killed with a single perfect shot to the head. Instead, it's like 14 to the like lower mm-hmm. legs because I, to the knee. <laughs> yeah. Cause I aimed poorly. Uh, and then I got shot like six times climbing the stairs. So my health is down into the third cell, but I'm fine. I got him and then I turned around and, and then I slowed down time and did a really sick backflip shot the guy at the top and I'm good. You know, there's one of them probably dropped health. So my next, uh, you know, environment will be good and it didn't go like I wanted it to, but it was still fun, you know? Uh, and it feels that, better when you get some improv too. Yeah. Well, it does both. I like, think because there there are there was a fair amount of times at least I like to feel like that I did more or less do the plan that I wanted to do, mm-hmm. and it like was awesome. And you land, and it's like that was tight. But even when you don't, it's uh, it's still fun to just sort of go into mayhem mode and just spamming the dodge button and just shooting and trying to separate your arms in a way where you can shoot more guys at the same time. It's chaos and it's fun. Yeah. Quick shout out to that dodge button because it really is just spinning and it's just spinning in a, like a, like doing a pirouette. It's one of the most ridiculous, like some dodges, it's not the matrix where you get to lean back and like dodge the bullets. Like you're literally just start spinning. Oh yeah. You just, it feels like, what you, I would do in like Golden Eye when I was yeah. trying to not get shot, but that was a bug. <laughs> like, yeah, you you just you know, spin move right out of those that hail of bullets from that uh, machine gun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great, and you can also reload during that time. And every uh, there's a lot of good uh, little animations in this game, and uh, you can reload, and your character while spinning will start pulling out the clip to like reload. Uh, all of that is is just fun as well um i guess we should talk briefly about what this game looks like right Mm -hmm. because everything i think in this game is meant to aid that so again there's a ton of little animations that are are fun um but it is a you know side scrolling would you call it 3d i i the 2D. elements are 3D, but you're not necessarily like behind the head. You're really sure. seeing your entire yeah. body. You're seeing the whole stage. So it's it's very 2D. It just has a lot of 3D elements in it. It's not like you can't um, – it's not even like a uh, Donkey Kong where you can have jump to the back of the depth of field. Like you're yeah. staying on one plane. You're going up and down stairs, but you're really just staying, you know, in one spot. You're, there's no foreground – background movement or anything like that so yeah, i did call it a 2d yeah i guess it is 2d i the the only thing that is even closer to that is the like flights of stairs sort of thing where like sure. you go up one and then you're on the second floor and you go up the next one and they're sort of in foreground and background just to differentiate the floors but yeah definitely but you uh, can't like choose to go to a different flight of stairs yeah you can't you can't even go back down uh sometimes so mm-hmm. um you know, this game made me think of like uh, uh, volume, but in the from Mike Bithel. Yeah. You know, it, I, it's like this could have been, or by Bithel Games, this almost like design style. Even though they've never made a game like this, I kept thinking this game would fit into the Bithel verse. Uh, mm-hmm. It just had that sort of design aesthetic to it. So it it takes place in sort of like a a futuristic CD city. You know, so everything, it's a lot of, a lot of blues and a lot of, uh, you know, like sunsets in the background. Uh, you're almost always inside of industrial feeling buildings. Uh, it feels like a lot, you know, almost like a, um, if you saw John Wick three, you know, a lot of it is inside of these buildings that are supposed to be sort of either sleek or like worn down factories. Um, Mm mm-hmm. And all of the bad guys more or less look the same, but they all have some pretty good animations. Uh, the biggest animation I think 
and it's not always perfect, but they definitely try, is that when you're in slow motion and you jump, you're always going to attempt to do a flip, which... Attempt is the right word. Which is a... (laughs) Which I... Just like a design philosophy of every time you jump, you're going to do a flip if you're in slow motion is a philosophy that I can get behind. However, it gets really clunky sometimes because you will do a flip. You're trying to do like, let's say you're trying to do slow motion wall jump. So you start slow motion, you jump. So your character starts doing a flip, but then you hit a wall and you try to wall jump, but you are like upside down it will sort of automatically adjust your guy to be able to do that flip and it feels fine or to to do that jump and it feels fine, but you can get in some really silly situations where you are entirely upside down, like head. There's some ragdoll DNA is how I was thinking about it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's a good way to put it. And somehow it works. You know, I guess I think the game is so silly that it doesn't like take away from it that you're ragdolling around sometimes. It, It probably adds to it really. Yeah, I think it makes it feel more silly and more light. It makes it feel a lot more like an action movie when you know that it can't possibly be real. Um, I think that like there's a lot of fun things with like you can kick a frying pan in someone's head. You can like kick a barrel onto them. And some games would have it be like a very like weighty thing. Like you're flipping a frying pan and it like – can come and hit you, but I'm pretty sure that none of that stuff can hurt you. It just hurts bad guys. Like it's got that kind of really nice, um, forgiving nature, but it also feels like, don't you like action movies when you kick someone in the head with a frying pan? Like it feels very like born. It feels like Indiana Jones, yeah. like shooting that guy when he comes at you with a knife, like yeah. everything is there for you to sh- kill someone with. Um, and it's a lot more playful than, some of the more like military style ones I've played. Yeah, there's um, there's a uh, um, a whole part of the game where you're on a skateboard, and mm-hmm. every time you jump, it does like a kickflip, and it's like that is entirely on. Un- you can ollie on the board and do a kickflip, and you don't have to do it. It's just if you jump, and that little animation it just adds. It's like yeah, because you could probably slow time when you've jumped on the skateboard probably separate mm-hmm. your arms shoot two different guys at the same time while the board below you is doing a slow motion kickflip it's like yeah that is awesome uh this game is always trying to set up these little scenes to make you feel awesome that frying pan there's one where you can shoot the frying pan it goes up in the air then if you shoot the frying pan enough times the bullet starts spraying off of it and it's the only way to kill these two guys that are guarding a certain area is to actually ricochet enough bullets off of the frying pan. So it bounces off of the frying pan and hits both of them. It is constantly trying to set you up with these completely ridiculous things uh, that you, you can decide to use or not. There's a, there'll be like basketballs or some sort of kickable ball that's all Mm -hmm. over the game. And your guy is seemingly so strong if you kick the ball into the head of one of the other and one of the bad guys, their head basically explodes. Pops right? off. Yeah. yeah. They're dead. Right. <laughs> and so you can there. These things are all over the place. It's up to you to use them if you want to. If not, you don't have to. There's gas cans you can throw around. Uh, and it's all generally pretty clear. The game design or the, the, the aesthetic, it's generally pretty obvious what can i interact with and what can i not yeah this is the type of game where they have the like lines and the hooks at the bottom and if you jump it at the top and you start shooting you're just going to turn upside down because it looks cooler yeah and and then they'll yeah. show you and now you're uh, upside down shooting because why not and they'll show you uh your character has a little um, sort of bubble around them that if you're being shot it'll highlight with an arrow that points at the direction that you're being shot at and the you have to aim but it's more of like an auto aim you just sort of point the stick in the direction of where you it's want like to shoot up down yeah. Aiming. yeah and the game does a lot of work for you so if you're looking at your guy doing an upside down awesome flip and all of a sudden you're being shot well right at your guy will be a little red arrow that's more or less pointing in the direction of where you're being shot from 
So if you just hold the aim stick in that the direction that the arrow showed and start firing, you're probably going to hit the thing that was shooting you. And so you can continue to do your awesome flip. And now it's even cooler because you shot another thing while doing the awesome flip, right? So everything is kind of aiding you in just executing what you want. It also is really forgiving if you are so distracted because you're doing something cool and you don't reload your gun, for example. It'll pop up and say, press Y to reload. If you're still shooting, it'll do a little delay, so you're kind of getting dinged for it, but it will reload for you. Like, it'll do some stuff for you. Like, if you don't ever reload your gun, it's not like they're gonna just let you dangle there like a piece of meat. Like, there's a delay. It, it's not going to be as good as if you reloaded the gun yourself, but it will go ahead and do it for you. Like, it'll take care of stuff occasionally if you are really, like, just distracted or not doing something yeah. or you're not getting a control, or it will pop up and be like, hey, you took a lot of bullets. Remember, L is how you dodge. Like, it'll remind you of the controls, which is something that I find really helpful in a lot of these games that I come back to months later yeah. and I don't remember the controls at all. I feel like if I wanted to, you know, put this down, there's 40 levels. If I wanted to play 20, play 10 a week later, it would remind me of where all the controls were and I'd be back in in no time. Yeah, and the stakes, like, it, it, like a good platformer, it gets more challenging by introducing more external elements, but it mm -hmm. doesn't really change what you do. You get new guns, which that you you expect that in any shooter and in this game it's like archetypes of guns you know it's it's like pistol so I, have to, I have to hit the button every time i want to shoot but it does a lot of damage you know a little like uzi or whatever you hold the button it shoots a bunch it sprays shotgun you know you're not you're not collecting like call of duty style where it's like oh i've got the ar 41 xb with the silver scope i want that one you know it's just what? I don't even think they name them. I think it's just the silhouettes. Like, yeah. they don't even, it's not they don't even... care. They're like, yeah. It's and you're almost all, I don't know about you, but, like, there is ammo for the, the, the guns above the pistol. But even though there's ammo, I virtually never had to deal with ammo as a restraint. I, I ride out occasionally, and they'd be like, you need to change to another gun because you're powerful weapons out of ammo and i was like okay that's like two seconds to change your gun yeah and they drop it enough where as long as you're being like a really light level of conservative with those guns you're gonna have it and and then even the pistol though is fine and you can do two pistols and mm -hmm. it's it doesn't really change your abilities it just kind of changes how you do it uh so i i appreciated that as well whether you're using a shotgun or a pistol, like it's probably going to get the job done. It's going to be fun anyway. Yeah. And I think the other thing that makes this really, that keeps it fun is there are so many checkpoints that if you do disastrously and you fall down a pit and die, you don't go back to the beginning. You go back to the same level you're on. They'll even like, if there's, eight guys in a room and you've taken out four of them and then you die, you'll start after death four. Like yeah. it's so forgiving and generous to you. One thing that I thought was really cool about its checkpoint is it seems to actually take you back to literally your moment in the game. Like a lot of games with checkpoints, you start over as if nothing you had done had ever happened. You're starting clean at a checkpoint, but this seems mm -hmm. to do some sort of freeze, like a memory of, what you did it, and what I mean by that is there was I, there's a time where like I you know I finished a little bit of a fight and there was a guy you know who had like just died and it, they do like ragdoll body for the things you've killed and he was falling over and I had moved into another room and uh, and I died and it, I started back over at the conclusion of the previous fight and that same animation was happening. 
So the same like guy was falling. So it's not like it's starting. It's not doing like a refresh and I'm starting over at a, at a specific checkpoint. It's like I'm literally going back to where I was only like a minute ago. Uh, and I appreciate that. I think that is, there is a difference. And I, and I think that's cool. It makes it feel a lot more like it's a movie you're directing as you're going through. Like you really are in an action movie because there it keeps the place yeah. intact. Yeah, that that's a good point. Um yeah, I couldn't really figure out why I thought that was better, but I think that makes it make sense. You're actually everything is happening and it doesn't go away just cuz you died. You just sort of start over. And again, yeah, it is very forgiving. Uh you are almost never doing the same area twice right um like ha- after having finished it again it's almost like a little puzzle right i i cleared that area with these four guys once you've cleared it you're not gonna have to do it again even if you die yeah, in the I, very next room yeah you're in the next room and the guys are out of the way and you know i, I think some of the you know, we're talking about some platformer elements there are like a lot of things you gotta you know jump off walls you gotta swing across on kind of like rope levers things uh, but there's also a lot of bullet platformer stuff which is like shooting levers and shooting uh, signs that things work or stay off like I think what really made me happy was like there are puzzle elements in it but really it's bullet puzzles they're they know that it's a shooter first and foremost and that that's the fun thing it's not like I have to like there's no stealth in this game, really. Like, you, it's not like you just like rock it and start shooting someone. So it's not like I have to like creep through a duct and flip a switch and then come back in the room and then I get to shoot. No, I am shooting all the time. <laughs> Everything the is shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not like randomly going to do a heist level in the middle of this. Like, yeah, I might be on a motorcycle, but I'm shooting guns on that motorcycle. Yeah. It's like, um, I, I think it's, uh, the guys on watch out for fireballs who, who uh, and Gary, who's been on a guest on this show many times, he said like a good stealth game is one that's still fun when you get caught. Uh, well, mm-hmm. this is that except for it's not stealth at all. It's, it's a, it's uh, you know, your idea of what would be a fun way to kill all these guys doesn't happen, but it's fun when it fails. Nate and I were talking about this before. And, and when he started, he's like, Oh, it's got a, super hot feel to it oh and, yeah yeah for sure uh, yeah because it's got this bullet time in the planning but the thing is like super hot in so fast and this is like nope you keep going and you're gonna do a lot more flips yeah the thing that uh i and i you were touching on this earlier it's really like the thing about super hot is it was one of the first games that i felt that i played that like took action movie sequences and let you play them right super hot was very clearly trying to drop you into action movie sequences like oh you're on the top of a train and you're gonna need to fight the guy on the top and then drop down into the train and fight the other guys or you're in a bank and it, you know it's all like cliche action movie scenes but you actually get to do it and it's awesome that is exactly what this game is doing too there are there's even a train <laughs> there yeah there are uh there's like the classic, you're on an elevator and there's a door on the left side and the right side and the elevator is going to go down, you know, bing, both doors or both doors open and you have to fight all the guys coming at you from both sides. And then bing, doors close, goes down a level and then doors open and you have to fight all those guys, right? I, it's not like there's not an exact action movie that that is a reference to, but it is like exactly what you would expect to see in an action movie that is based around these, this sort of action. Right. And whether you do it in a really, really cool way by freezing time and perfectly dodging everything and executing it, or you just get shot a ton and you just like bulldoze your way through the level, it's going to feel really, really cool. And super hot did that really well. And I think this game does that really well. I really liked that it didn't put all the cool stuff in cutscenes and it didn't keep all the like action shooty stuff. Like it could have been really easy to put a lot of the stunts and tricks and kind of like no control land. And here you're actually controlling the bullet time. You're doing cool stuff in the cutscenes. 
uh, it does feel like you have a lot more um, ability to do whatever you want. And if you want to play it in a very planned, knowledgeable way, you can. If you want to try to speed run this, you can. If you want to try to shoot everybody in a very stealthy way, you can. But like I was able to just kind of run and gun and flip and shoot and make my way through as a shooter dunce. Like Raiden calls us puzzle, puzzle dunce. I'm a shooter dunce. And yeah. if I can play this and have fun, like I really feel like almost anyone can. Yeah, it's it's hyper violent, but like uh, let's get real. You've probably watched a movie. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I kept thinking you've already called it out, but I kept thinking of John Wick, uh, which the first John Wick movie is. I think one of the best action movies of this decade, if not all time. Just, so yeah. good. <laughs> uh, this game is closer to John Wick 2 and 3, which uh, I could have a whole conversation about how those movies. He's uh, a lot safer in 2 and 3. <laughs> I, it's the whole, I don't know. So there's a whole lot of uh, reasons why I'm like, am I supposed to root for John Wick? What is he doing in, in movies 2 and 3? But this game is closer to to the uh, style of John Wick 3, uh, where he is just, whether, you know, just whether it's right or wrong, he's just killing everyone that's in front of him. Mowing uh, everyone down. Yeah, that is uh, closer to this game. And, and even more, like, you know, in those, in like John Wick and these, game, these newer movies that are using guns like that, where you are just like point blank and they're just firing like, super heavily into the chest of someone and then moving on to the next thing. And it's, it's like hyper violent. This game is definitely playing off of that. Uh, and it's fun, I guess. <laughs> yeah. To the point that it doesn't feel as real. So it's yeah, even more fun. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That makes me feel like better. Got, like there, it's super violent, but like, it's not as if like someone is like getting hit and being like, say goodbye to my wife. Like, there's yeah. That. Well, like and- it's, and, dead. and like, uh, yeah, say goodbye to my wife. Uh, and also like John Wick, uh, we haven't really touched on the story at all because it's more just a thing that moves you from cool scene to cool scene. Uh, but you exist in a world where it seems like bounty hunters and just, you know, killers are the, it's like the day job of everyone. So uh, everyone that you're fighting and everyone that you're killing seems to be a pretty awful person wrapped up in a pretty awful existence and a pretty awful world. So I don't, you know, you don't know exactly when you start the game uh, who you are, but everyone that you're shooting is very clearly a bad dude, uh, which does help a little bit. Yeah, and I guess you technically have this imaginary friend, Banana, Pedro, who kind of floats around, but really Pedro just reminds me to reload my gun um, and occasionally talks to me. Like, it's not really a story thing. Like, I think it's just kind of like a really good marketing gimmick and also like, sure, a ban- and it's a reason that headline writers write, it's Bananas, like on there all of go. the reviews yeah. I looked at. Yeah, um, it, it definitely like, it adds a tone to the game. For sure, mm-hmm. it you know, and it adds a little bit of humor. the The banana makes some jokes, and there's not a lot of dialogue, but each in between each level, there may be a little bit, or almost more like in between each act, there'll be a little scene, mm-hmm. you know, where banana talks to you. Uh, you might catch some, uh, some dialogue from other characters in the game. Other than that, you're mostly just moving from fight to fight to fight to fight. And it it, it it's silly. I mean, it, you said at the beginning this is an Adult Swim sponsored or brought to you by Adult Swim game. So you or it can, was or it when was. it started, yeah. So you can imagine, like, we've done a bunch of Adult Swim games for this show at this point, and, and uh, there's a lot of great Adult Swim games, but they always have that sort of, like, isn't this – silly isn't this random it's a floating banana you know like this weird layer of silliness or but it's not even like surrealism like i thought the banana was gonna be like maybe this guy's mentally ill but the banana doesn't matter like yeah the stunts matter yeah yeah it's all to tell it's all just to set you up for these for these moments uh yeah and the game 
I think they know that too, right? The whole game is built. Oh, around, they're in on it. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not like a flaw that the banana isn't central to the plot because they don't care. No, it doesn't matter. And the whole game is pretty uh, honest about what it's trying to do. At the end of each level, which again, each level is maybe going to be five to 10 to 15 minutes, maybe if you're really trying to like slow down and not get shot. But at the end of every stage or every level, there's literally a score and it shows you uh, how quickly did you beat it? You get points. How much damage did you take? You get points. Did you kill everyone? You get points. And then you get a score. And that's what Laura said earlier. She got a C on every level I did as well. And it, ranks how well you played through that level and then you have a chance do you replay or do you go forward so i think this game really wants you to play every stage and maximize and calculate how you're going to go through it without getting shot with killing everyone uh and playing it perfectly now i had fun kind of failing my way through it but i can i can see there's like a version of me that was like or there's a there's a part of me that was like yeah, I actually kind of want to go through and figure out what's like the perfect path for this game because it is detailed to that degree. It also shows you uh, when you finish the level, there's a little video that plays that shows you, I think it's supposed to be like your coolest trick. Uh, we haven't really yeah. talked about it yet, but everything you do collects points for you. So further highlighting that it's all about doing cool stuff. And everything is like, it's basically combos. And you get combo bonuses by doing things in the air or doing things like really, really unique or or hitting them with a frying pan or whatever. And the more stuff you can do in, in a tight window, the higher your combo is and the more points you get. And I think the thing at the end shows you what is like the most amount of points you scored in a in a really tiny amount of time, like a three second window. I don't know exactly what it is. It's some algorithm like that, which for the most part would show you something and you're like, yeah, that was really cool. However, there was one moment where I, I it might have been the most points I earned, but I had jumped to a thing to try to catch on to a hanging rope, but I missed it. And so I was falling to my death. But in the moment of me falling to my death, I did manage to shoot the two guys that were uh, mm-hmm. that were on each side of the abyss. You know, and and, uh, that was the moment that kept replaying in my uh, in my. Yeah, you're going down the pit, but you you managed to be like, yeah, not my best. Look really cool as you go. I looked really cool while I was uh, falling to my death. Uh, So anyway, the whole thing is like geared towards you playing these levels, replaying these levels and mastering them. So you're getting like a high score on every single level, uh, which I think is uh, really appealing. You know, I don't know that I'll go back and do it mostly just because we're playing something like every week, you know, Mm -hmm. and we tend to move forward, but like I, I am definitely incentivized. Like it's a lot of fun. And so I can see myself really trying to like maximize these scenes and, and play them out really, really well. I mean, it's really great that sometimes I'm in the mood for an action movie and being able to choose to play one instead of just watching one is going to be really tempting in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great, uh, I think that's a great way, uh, great way to put it. And uh, only semi related, but uh, you know, one thing I can't help but think about is we just spent the last month doing IF comp and Mm -hmm. I love IF comp. It's very different. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but this was maybe the perfect game for uh, for me to do coming out of IF Comp, where it is just mindless silliness and action, <laughs> like action yep. and not reading. <laughs> I mean, and like I literally English was major, like you know, discussing so. Plato's Wall of the Cave last week, and now I'm like talking about parkour and just glowing about shooting people in the head. So yeah, quite oh, yeah. different. Yeah. Let's not, let's not get too far into the moral implications of how much we've just glorified uh, shooting people no. with guns. <laughs> nope. Uh, but that's the fun of video games, right? You, you do whatever you want. So exactly.
So it's been playing uh, you know, throughout this episode, but I, I think it's always good to touch on the music for these types of games. I think that they did a good job of matching the style of music and the tone of it to the scene and to the to the uh, moment it wasn't anything that like super stood out to me um and in a game like this i think that's actually probably better uh it it's your classic sort of action movie edm you know like i i always mm-hmm. think about the 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 scene from the matrix 2 like the big party that i think like has ruined or influenced like a thousand different action movies uh ever since that scene you know um, the rave yeah the rave in the matrix 2 uh which is yeah uh so it was good i think it, it served its purpose uh i've listened to it a little bit after playing and uh it definitely moves you forward if that makes sense yes yeah definitely there's no really spectacular standout tracks, but it's not going to annoy you. And I, there's no voiceover in this, which is something that I know if, if a couple people have, like, dinged it for. But to me, it just keeps you focused on, like, being cool, as I've mentioned a million times so far. Voiceover would make it a little too plot heavy, and I don't think it's necessary. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I super disagree with that. because I, I didn't can, miss it. I, I, I really can, didn't miss it. Whatever choice they would decide for the banana's voice, I would feel would be stupid and annoying there's like no just be way. some weird brick and morty stuff sorry yeah. brick and morty lovers yeah there's no way you do a floating banana voice that isn't like kind of annoying right so in, instead yeah. doing the just like uh texty yeah like that was totally fine i think i would have been it would have been a waste of resources in my opinion to try to make all of these different things being voice act the only thing, and, and now you bring it up, the only thing that stood out to me that I think was like maybe um, less great on this game, and this is very surprising for me because I l- normally love this, but like the the platforming sort of moments, you know, where you had to like jump from one thing to another and like time your jumps and, and, and do really classic platforming elements. Uh, I was just like, I don't like what, why it, this isn't adding anything. I just want to get to the next sort of fight, you know? So I thought they were mostly mm-hmm. just like filler. Uh, and I didn't think they were really that fun, which again is very surprising to me because I love platforming games. I am still deeply entrenched in Celeste uh, chapter nine and getting through it. So it, that's my mm-hmm. wheelhouse. But for this game, I was just like, I think they just like built a platforming engine and they're like, yeah, of course, let's make them jump over some gaps and make them time some jumps between moving platforms. Like that's what, it, that's what we do in these games. Uh, and it, mm-hmm. that, that felt a little unnecessary to me, but it's a very small part of the game and a very small criticism. So uh, don't let that distract you from what I thought was a overall very fun game. Uh, I, I definitely recommend that it, that, you pick this game up it's fun it's lightweight uh it was perfect on switch i don't think we've ever said a game was bad on switch but this one felt really good on switch of course ps4 Mm -hmm. or i'm sorry pc i'm sure will be just as good so i highly recommend you you pick up this game i i uh i really really enjoyed it so again thank you to aiden from our discord for recommending it uh and um, go check it out. Yes, definitely go check it out. So, Nate, what is making you happy this week? Yeah, so I've got a couple things. So, one, uh, it was my birthday last weekend. and Happy belated birthday. Yes, thank you. And I got, uh, Molly got me a Korg Volca Beats, which is, it's a little drum machine, basically. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. So you can, um, it's like a sequencer style drum machine. So you, you create the patterns. Uh, so that's just a really simple little thing that I've been working on. And it will sync with my uh, teenage engineering pocket operators, which I've talked about on this uh, show in the past, which are also little drum machines. 
and you can actually pair them together and they will control each other's tempo and make just really fun and it's all analog uh little beats that have been really fun to play with and yeah so that's been making me happy also what's been making me happy is a game from apple arcade called what the golf now i only downloaded this because it was recommended on i saw it like on twitter or something that i should play it so i went into it just like every other game that i go into completely blind and so the thing what what the what what the golf does is take the mechanic that you're used to from golf games which is pull back for power and let go for accuracy and it takes that mechanic and plays with it in every single possible way that you could think of so it does it in silly ways and then it does it in really interesting mechanical ways uh, and the way the game highlights that this is not what you're expecting is on the very first level, you're sitting there and there's a golfer ready to swing at a ball. You pull back to set the power, you let go. And instead of the golfer swinging and hitting the ball in the direction you thought it was going, the entire golfer goes flying in the direction of the, uh, the, air, the, the direction that you pointed at the power at which you set it. So it continues to mess with your uh, expectations for what is going to happen, let alone how you do it. It's very funny. It has a incredibly silly soundtrack. It's also challenging enough to keep you coming, but also like easy enough that you can move forward without getting stuck on anything. Uh, I just, I really recommend it. It's very, very silly. Uh, it's a ton of little small levels. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. So check out What the Golf. Laura, awesome. how about you? Yeah, so my stuff's going to be a little hyper-local. Uh, so I'm still learning my neighborhood in New York. And uh, I've talked about a lot of my like love of going to shows and how every time I'd go to New York, I'd go see like a billion Broadway shows. You can't really do that when you live here because you will just have no money. Uh, but there is a very good site called Broadway for Broke People, and it is the crappiest looking website. It's literally like an HTML table, and it's got like color coded rows, but it's got a list of all the shows on Broadway. It turns them bright red uh, when they're about to close. It tells you how to get rush tickets, like if there's under 40 programs, if there's people under 35 programs, if people under 20 programs, like it, it tells you links to all the lotteries. Um, so it's kind of like, if you really are trying to see a bunch of shows and you don't care about having like the primo $200 seats, it's awesome. So tourists awesome. and people who live here alike, Broadway for Broke People is amazing. But I got really excited because I won tickets to the Cursed Child lottery Hooray. next week. Hooray. So like I won the Hamilton lottery a while back. There's a lot more lotteries here. I'm hoping to keep winning. Um, but I'm really happy that uh, I get to go see. I actually have a friend from college in it. So and nice. it's super expensive so i actually get to see the show um my other hyper local one is um uh partly to celebrate cursed child we went out and uh looked for some uh, booze and we found a really great liquor store uh in our neighborhood it's the kind of place where they have like the handwritten recommendations where they like tell you why they like certain things and i've seen them at wine stores but never like telling me which like small batch brandy to buy you like, wanna, you're gonna want to drink this tequila because it's good tequila because it's real good tequila <laughs> <laughs> but like so we picked out a bottle of vermouth to drink because we went to spain and we drank vermouth there and really liked it and we were like wow they not only have like 20 vermouths they'll tell us which ones are to put in cocktails and which ones are for like you know a 10 dollar bottle you can drink like a bottle of wine so mm. I'm, I'm really happy that it's starting to feel a little more like home because I'm finding my go-to places. And it's not necessarily that I found a great liquor store. It's that I found a place that I can talk to somebody and they'll help me. Yeah. And it feels a little more like home. That's awesome. That yeah. makes such a difference. Um, you know, we moved seven months ago and of course I just moved, you know, within the same city, but even that learning, what are the resources within like walking distance, what's going to be my new normal for when I go and get the things that I need. 
uh, it, it just adds to making you more comfortable in your new space. So that's, that's awesome. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and obviously liquor is a daily, uh, if not hourly need. So it's good that you finally found your, your place. Yes, it's good. <laughs> I mean, we're still looking, but like, it's a start. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I think that's all that we've got for this episode. So, um, Again, we wish uh, well to Reagan and Shane, wherever they may be right now. Uh, And to all of you listening, thank you for listening to the show. Uh, If you have enjoyed this, uh, we would love it if you would just take the couple minutes it takes to go onto iTunes or the podcast app and give us a rate. Uh, Just giving us the stars is cool. Tell us how you think. And then if you go and write something, even better and uh if you've been listening to the show for a while you know i will awkwardly read it on the show Mm -hmm. so uh if that's not incentive then i don't know what is um and maybe i don't know what is but uh you can we would love it if you would go and rate and review us uh you can also uh visit our website at www.theshortgame.net on there we have our entire catalog of now over 200 episodes uh and you can also contact us through a contact form uh we uh, whenever someone writes out we all read it we all talk about it we really really love your recommendations a lot of the games that we've covered on this show have come from those recommendations a lot of the feedback and improvements of the show have come from those recommendations so please if you have something to say uh, you can do it on there or you can just do it straight up live at underscore short game on twitter uh we are on there and we're happy to talk you talk to you through that as well so all sorts of ways to contact us to talk to us uh we really 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 love to hear you hear from you and then of course our patreon anyone a dollar or more joins the discord it is a it is a vibrant conversation across all sorts of games uh and it is been such a positive impact on the show and sort of our community around this show uh so we would love to have you there whether you are posting or you're just reading just being there we love it it's uh it's really made us happy uh and we hope that those that are in the discord it's made them happy as well so anyway one dollar or more uh that's patreon.com slash the short game and uh yeah so check it out we love and there will be mm-hmm. there will be more uh soon so uh you can find me on twitter at nate stl laura where can and people you can find you find me on twitter at laura j nash all right perfect so again thank you all for listening to the short game and we hope you have a wonderful week and a preliminary thank you to nate for doing all the editing <laughs> hey. while i do very little well, <laughs> i don't mind it one out of every yes. like 75 episodes i think i can do the editing so absolutely all right bye